Hi everyone, for this video we're going to be talking about the body cavities and the membranes that surround these cavities. So let's get started. Body cavities are going to be defined as these enclosed spaces within the body that are going to help protect and also support the internal organs that are located within these cavities. There are two main types of body cavities. We have the ones that are located dorsally, so in the posterior compartment, as you can see right over here, it's gonna be the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. And then we have the other group, which are part of the ventral cavity. And these are going to be located anteriorly or ventrally. There are three cavities that are located anteriorly or ventral and these are going to be the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, and the pelvic cavity. Like I mentioned earlier, the cranial cavity will house the brain, the vertebral cavity, which can also be called the spinal cavity, will house the spinal cord. So it makes sense to also call it spinal cavity, but because it runs through the vertebral foramen, it can also be called the vertebral cavity. Within the thoracic cavity, we're going to have three different types of cavities. You have the ones where the lungs are going to be located in this cavity, which is called the pleural cavity. We have the pericardial cavity, which is this one right here in the middle, which will house just the heart. In addition to the pleural and the pericardial cavity, we're going to have a third cavity, which is called the mediastinum which will be located right here in the middle, and it will house, in addition to the heart, important blood vessels. It will house different organs, like the thymus. In addition to, for example, the esophagus, the trachea, and important blood vessels that are at the base of the heart, at the top part of the heart. Just inferior to the thoracic cavity, you're gonna see the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. Collectively, they can be called the abdominal pelvic cavity, but they will house different organs. So the abdominal cavity will house most of your digestive system organs, and the pelvic cavity will house part of the descending colon, and it will also contain the urinary bladder and the rectum. In females, besides all these organs, it will also house the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. In addition to all this, the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavities are separated by a muscle that's called the diaphragm. This muscle is going to be very important for respiration, and when we get to the respiratory system in A and P2, that's when we will cover the functions of this muscle in more details. If we want to define a membrane, then it will be a thin tissue that will cover and line and separate or connect structures. The thoracic and abdominal cavities together with the organs inside of them, they're going to be lined by this membrane that's called a serous membrane. Now there are two sides to the membrane. There's what we call the visceral layer and the parietal layer. This membrane is going to be very slippery and it will form this continuous double layered membrane. So this means that the visceral layer is going to be continuous with the parietal layer. Now visceral means viscera that equals organ and parietal means wall. So how are these two membranes continuous? So the clear example that we like to use is if you put a fist inside a half-filled balloon, you're going to see how it creates a part of the balloon that will be in contact with your fist. So this would represent your organ, like we have here the heart in contact with this inner lining and then this outer lining is going to be in contact with the wall of the cavity. 
In the balloon example, we can see how this area over here between the two layers is going to be filled with air. And there's also a space over here between the visceral layer and the parietal layer. And this space is going to be called the serous cavity. So we have the serous membrane lining not only close to the organ, but also close to the cavity wall right over here. Like I said, between the two membranes, there is going to be a space which is called the serous cavity. And inside the space, there's going to be a fluid. So in the example of the balloon, we had it filled with air, and now it's filled with a fluid, and this fluid is gonna be called the serous fluid. The main function of this fluid is to reduce the friction between the two layers. So for example, when uh, it is located within the heart and your heart is beating, it creates a certain friction. So the fluid is there to make sure that it reduces the friction during this process. Depending on where this serous membrane is located, in which cavity it is located, it will receive a different name. As we know from the previous slide, the heart is going to be located in the pericardial cavity. The membrane that lines this cavity is called the pericardium. Now the pericardium is going to be divided into visceral and parietal pericardium. The membrane that's in contact with the heart is going to be called visceral pericardium. And the membrane that's in contact with the pericardial wall is going to be called parietal pericardium. The pleura is going to be the membrane that will line the pleural cavity, which is the cavity that contains the lungs. So the membrane that's in contact with the lungs is going to be called the visceral pleura. And the membrane that's in contact with the wall of the pleural cavity, it's going to be called the parietal pleura. In the abdominal cavity, the serous membrane is it's going to be called the peritoneum. Therefore, the lining that is in close contact with the abdominal organs is going to be called the visceral peritoneum and the one that's in close contact with the wall of the abdominal cavity is gonna be called parietal peritoneum.